So what is risk management? This is one key aspect as to why a lot of people who try their hand in financial markets um, actually end up failing because they just have, they have no idea how to risk manage, yet alone that it's something that the winning minority actually do. So let's discuss. It's one of the most important cornerstones to our success long term is our ability to risk manage, i.e. keeping the losses small and letting our winners run to the moon and back. We want to treat our account as our business and really minimize the downside, protecting our capital um, before we actually grow it. Um, a lot of the time, uh, certainly people who are new to the market are so preoccupied with making money that it doesn't come really um, apparent to them that the first goal for them is to be uh, protective of their capital. So it's essential to preserve your capital first, then make money. And one way we can do that is through risk management. So there's an equilibrium between protecting and growing money and keeping that balance in check and keeping true to a set of rules, i.e. So if we're able to risk a small amount for every trade we place in pursuit of a trade with high profit potential, then we really will be growing our account consistently with the execution of a successful and profitable strategy. So one aspect of risk management is selecting trades with a decent reward to risk. You've probably heard us mention this before, and this is one aspect of it. The second aspect is trade sizing. And this is what we've just discussed with keeping the risk per trade small every time, no matter how good the opportunity looks. So essentially to trade size, what we do is we divide the difference between our entry price and our target price, i.e what we're looking to get as reward, we divide that number by the pips of risk, i.e. the difference between our entry price and our stop loss. And this will give us a number. Okay. And what we want to do as we're traders who want to trade trades with a healthy reward to risk, we want to only really trade trades with a profit potential which exceeds how much we're risking for the trade. So we might be risking $100 on a particular trade or 100 pips, but we want to pursue a trade of a profit potential of at least £200 or dollars or 200 pips. OK, so 1% of our trading account divided by the number of pips we have risked by the total account value. 1% of our trading account means that if the trade goes the other way, and we make a loss, then we've only lost 1% of our trading account. We haven't blown the whole lot like a lot of people do when they're new to trading financial markets. So certainly living on the edge and being um, ballsy in the market doesn't really help grow your accounts. It really is just a fine line between gambling. And when people do that, of course, they might make a bit of money initially, but of course, long term, they're doomed to failure. So what is reward to risk and how do we get good reward to risk? This is related very closely to risk management. And of course, we want to risk an amount of pips which less to how much reward we're going to get, potentially. So in real terms here, reward to risk is the amount of pips that we or you will be rewarded on a successful trade outcome divided by the number of pips that we risk losing if the trade goes the other way and loses us money. So again, we look to work this out by dividing the pips of reward by the pips of risk. So for example, if we um, are looking to make 400 pips from a particular trade setup and we've only got 100 pips of risk, then we have a positive reward to risk and we're looking to potentially make 400 pips. So it's a four to one reward to risk trade. So imagine that we had a winning percent of 75% and that means that we win 75 trades out of 100. That would be fantastic. However, <laughs> there is one slight hitch. So if your losses are much larger than your 75 wins, say you lost 25 times, but you've won 75 times, then we want to make sure that our losses are a lot smaller than our 75 wins because otherwise it would be absolutely pointless having this reward to risk mechanism. 
<laughs> we are serious. I know it might seem a little bit counterintuitive, but let's have a look more closely. Say, for example, on a winning trade, you win 25 pips, and on your losing trade, you lose 100 pips. Your losses are therefore four times the size of your wins. So even if you have more winning trades um, than losing trades, you'll still ultimately end up losing more because your losses will far exceed your wins. We don't want that to happen. So, for example, out of the 75 trades which are winning and you make 25 pips per trade, you make 1,875 pips. However, out of the 25 trades that you've lost, risking 100 pips, you've lost a total of 2,500, even though you might have had a much higher frequency of winning trades, 75, versus 25 losing trades, you've still lost more pips and in monetary loss as well. So it can be a little bit deceiving, but as long as you realize this, then you'll be head and shoulders above most people who try their hand in it. And this is really a very uh, frequent rookie error. So we always want rewards to be at least twice the size of the risk. So if we're risking 100 pips for a particular trade, we want to look and pursue an opportunity which has at least 200 pips. Or if we've got uh, 50 pips risk for a trade, we want to target um, an opportunity which has at least 100 pips reward, and so forth. So remember that the reward potential must at least be twice the size of the risk. So we can win 50 times and lose 50 times and still be profitable. Like for example, with your winning trades you win 50 pips, and in your losing trades you lose 25 pips. Your wins are twice the size of your losses, so that you can afford even to have more losing trades than winning trades. And even though that might feel like a horrible situation or a horrible place to be, you're still you're still in a monetary gain overall. Even if we're risking three to one per trade, we can afford to have out of ten trades seven losing trades. Say, for example, if we've lost 7%, risking 1% out of those 7 out of 10 uh, losing trades, yet the free winning trades we've hit are 3 to 1 profit potential and we've made 9%. The difference between 7 and 9 means that we've still made 2% overall. So I know that might be hard to visualise, but it just underscores how important it is to have positive reward to risk because it means that your wins are twice the size or more than your losses, and you can afford to even have more losing trades. Okay, so let's look at the numbers. Say if you have won a total of 2,500 pips, 50 winning trades times 50 pips won per trade, versus 25 losing trades, um, risking 25 pips per trade, then you've only lost a total of 1,250 pips. So it's a winning proposition. Fantastic. That's where you want to be. Keeping the risk low and the reward high. Simple. So how do we get a good reward to risk? Let's have a look at this. We have what is known as a bullish pin bar reversal here, um, based on one of the strategies which we teach in the members area. And we have our entry halfway down um, this bar and our stop loss below the low minus spread minus a few pips. So as we can see here, even visually, without counting the number of pips, the difference between our entry um, price and our stop loss is six times less than the difference between our entry and our target, which is fantastic because it means that if we are right, then we've got six times the risk as a potential gain to our trading account. And of course, in this hypothetical example, it goes and hits target. We do have a very high reward to risk trade here for the purpose of this example. And this is really what you should be going for off the back of a positive reward to risk. You'll be getting, even if you get more losing trades, you'll still be getting a positive reward after all. So make your wins count. And this is how we trade at the Lazy Trader. We trade in a very low frequency high quality, high probability trades with a high profit potential um, where we can afford to be wrong even more times than we're right. But that's fine because the trades that really do come home and hit target are typically five to ones uh, where we risk 1% in pursuit of 5% or even 10, 15, 20 to ones. And that does happen. And this is how we trade. What do you think of that? Trading does not have to be difficult or time consuming.
In fact, all you need to become a profitable lazy trader is a single strategy which you can trade for only minutes a day. Visit thelazytrader.com and download for free five rapid ways to become highly profitable at Forex trading and your trade secret video pack so that you can copy the winning elite and rapidly accelerate your long-term success in financial markets trading. Trade profitably from as little as minutes a day and beat the banks and brokers at their own game. This is available for a limited time, so download it today, www.thelazytrader.com. It's free, fun, and most importantly, it will help you. Visit thelazytrader.com.